a very good morning to you all and um, so I'm going to begin uh, with two of us are going to be talking uh, in this um, segment and uh, I'm going to begin the talk with talking about my book called Play, Practice and Pursue. So I want to just give you a little bit about the beginning of why I did this. It is based on uh, uh, the national education policy which talks about 10 days bagless period in the middle school. What is so important about that? I mean like, okay, fun games and you know, no studies, no bags, but that's not true. So this whole idea is something I've been working on since 2007 on the introduction of something called pre-vocation education. Why that? Because I know that a lot of us had great introductions to various arts and skills as kids. But what about the children in our villages? What about our rural children? What about our farmer children? They are not introduced to the arts of India or maybe just one or two. But do you know that, that India, Bharat Desh, has over 300 arts and crafts which will die if our students don't learn them in the schools. And there is no accommodation of that in any of our schools. There are two segments. One are the state schools and government schools and the others are the great boards that have come from abroad which don't even bother to teach our children about India. And I think that's really sad. For example, there is a wonderful uh, instrument, a musical instrument in Kutch. There is only one instrument left and only one person who plays it and the irony is the person who repairs it is in the, across the border in Pakistan. That's it. And that's happening to a lot. I don't know if the ladies know about the Maheshwari saris which were dying. And they were revived. There is a beautiful uh, documentary on Banarsi weave, which we all wear in our weddings. Do you know the person who weaves Banarsi was crying? He said the kids need to learn about this when, the, when they're in the sixth standard. So we are not talking of child labor. And the whole thing is that this child rights program which was created in the West is not applicable to our country. And yet we follow it because they don't even have half the arts and crafts that we have. And as far as I know that the silly education system which they brought in and we were even sillier to continue doing it doesn't talk of this. You just had one wonderful example of a person who talked of history right now. Why do you think we were taught that we were losers? Why do you think we were taught that we don't have any art craft? We don't have anything. Because one of the things is they attack our self-esteem. They destroy us. And I'm very serious about this. Like Anand talked a lot, you know, and I agree with a lot of his, I mean, everything he's talking about. And, you know, they say, he said that the vote bank first wants the food and the gas and the toilets, the roti, kapra or makan. But don't you realize that mental health is a big thing? <clears throat> and mental health doesn't have to do with roti, kapra or makan. One of the biggest things that gets us to our life, uh, to our mental health is culture. And what is culture? Culture by definition is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, moral laws, customs and other capabilities and habits 
that are acquired by men uh, by people in the member of society culture is the essence of the spirit of the society and includes rules principles morality the way we dress the language we speak the religion we follow the religion we follow the rituals the art and the system of belief how come you're not taught this in school how come do you know sadly all the policies even though this new nep 2020 is one of the world's greatest document as an educationist i say that they don't talk of spirituality they talk of holistic education but what is the whole person you know years back it was intelligence so it was the iq then they realized no we are emotional beings so they got eq and then we talked about being strong and healthy and we talked of pq that's the physical health in 19s in the uh, in the 20th century the world health organization came up with this beautiful term life skills the psychosocial skills and so we started a very few people i bet none of you all do that think about it social quotient but there are two very important quotients that we are not talking about one is a spiritual quotient and the other is aesthetic quotient so this book addresses that and of course everybody says that um, you know a change comes from up i believe change comes from down i believe if we bring this into our schools we will change the child in the school we don't want to change him actually we want to transform him and i'm not talking of the elite i'm talking of every child every child in our village every child in the slums i'm talking about the child in child labor i'm talking about the child on the streets and i'm talking importantly about the child in the apartments in the high rises because those are the ones that are going to probably become the bureaucrats we need to change everybody's thinking so this book talks about that and that's what i'm talking about including spirituality in the schools i am talking of aesthetics and i'm going to raise a very important point here if we want to bring bharat fast forward we need to take a stand which i do at all academic conferences is i am not from southeast asia i am from india don't club me with southeast asia another thing is it is not eastern knowledge it is indian knowledge it is not aesthetics which is only based on greece the western aesthetics i want my children to learn indian aesthetics there is a vast difference i'm not saying western aesthetics is bad no first learn indian aesthetics and then learn western aesthetics western aesthetics is about copying nature which is great because if you see their statues they're wonderful i mean i have you know sat looking at these statues and i've got these pictures where i've looked at it and looked at it and just fallen in love with what the artist did or the beautiful landscapes but do you know indian aesthetics is even greater than that and i get goose pimples just thinking about it because you know all of it is done for the glory of god there are two aspects of indian history uh, indian aesthetics one is the art art and the other art is in our homes the beautiful ghade pe ghade pe ghada 
all the wonderful kach embroidery done for every day wear this is everyday stuff this is aesthetics this is what india is about and this is what i want my children to learn and like krishna bhagwan says that everything is mine sure and that's why our wonderful artists did not write their names on their paintings just think of that beauty you know recently i met somebody who bought some fantastic paintings and all for odisha and they said that the government is stealing these people's this thing by not allowing them to sign no it isn't that you did not sign your work because it was done for the glory of god so the next point i'm going to raise is that we as teachers and parents need to teach our children this besides the other things but we need to teach them this and that's what i did in the village i did a whole um a whole 10 day workshop and that's what this book is about of how i taught the 92 kids the aditya ridanam and i told them this is in valmiki's ramayan india bharat knew that the earth moved in such a way that the sun rise you know rose at the himalayan mountains and went down the vindhyas we knew that the sun was the giver of health and thus wealth we knew that ram shri ram when he said this he got the power to fight his enemies i empowered my children by an enabling them to learn it how did i do it i did it with great fun as a story i told the aditya ridanam then i made a ppt with all the pictures and then i took them to a heritage site the modhira sun temple i showed them the beauty of art over there they saw the story of aditya ridanam in the temples they heard about how the great king of patan made this temple to celebrate the sun they also learnt that in islamic invasion broke every idol on this temple why do we hide this you know when we talk of colonization we only talk of british colonization so i ask senior teachers in college do why are you not talking of islamic see we've got muslim kids in the in our class so we even have christian kids in our class we need so somebody asked me you're talking of teaching stotras and spirituality and sanatan dharm in the classroom because sanatan dharm is spirituality and i said yes so they said what about the muslim kids what about the christian kids and i said we need to understand that all of us have a common heritage we have the common heritage of the sindhu sanskriti sindhu saraswati sanskriti i am not teaching them religion there are millions of stotras from the vedas which the unesco calls the four pillars that hold up the superstructure of asia unesco calls mahabharat and ramayan it's a tangible heritage and it's called the world's best poetry written with a message to humanity yet in the name of secularism we do not teach our children this isn't that wrong so uh, i think i've nearly come to the end of my time haven't i is yeah so i want to raise some points which are very important and that is um, something which you all should know uh, when we talk about it uh not teaching children especially the hindu children in spirituality and their stotras in school 
do you know it's not only against the goals of sdg 2030 which the whole world is a signatory about but it is against the uncrc that's the united nation convention of child rights yes it states that by incorporating such education children get deeper understanding of their rights and are empowered to explore their spiritual belief while respecting diverse perspective of others article that was article 14 it says the human right to freedom of religion and it's in the child rights okay i'm not talking of other rights human rights because we are great no child right this child right that labor this labor that so use this too and then um education in religion and culture can help children exercise their rights to culture participation as stipulated in article 15 and 31 of uncrc finally such education can support child rights to their own identity as enshrined in article 2 7 and 30 of the uncrc do you see this it's the culture is you know heavily talked about in the sdgs because it says that we have to include include culture human right heritage creativity all these com components in education so yeah and the child rights i think it's a very important thing and so when i went to modhera i taught the children guess what i taught them there you'd not be able to believe this i taught them mathematics at the temple because in the kund there is fractal geometry and the fibonacci series even before the name fractal geometry was made this temple was made with fractal geometry but we also need a very silent revolution which will happen in schools and we need to do it and we need to be aware i would like you all all to be aware and know about the new education framework that's come out do you know that ashifali you should know this that the yoga was not included in it till somebody protested and said how can you not put yoga in the new national education uh, new framework not in the nep and the um, curriculum framework because that's what they're going to learn now for the next 30 40 years so please be aware you know we have to fight this at different levels and for me it's my children the children of my country i want to change their lives i want to take bharat fast forward this way i want to have entrepreneurs in the classroom and they will only be entrepreneurs if we introduce this at the preparatory level in the middle school i think we should all start respecting that teacher who's teaching the kids in the first and the second standard too and she has this great thing to do and at the same time i really thank all my friends who are writing these wonderful books on history and i hope that they get included properly into the framework or some of us teachers are bold enough to say you know this is what's written but this is the truth so let's learn the truth and like my motto is if not me then who if not now then when i think everybody should do this if not now then when are we going to do it we all need to take a stand thank you very much thank you swarup sampad ji for that very very moving and inspiring talk i am ananda shankar jain a bharatnatyam dancer a uh, teacher choreographer i also served as a bureaucrat the much maligned word for many years so i have always brought the two learnings from my dance and my 
bureaucratic world. They've always met each other. So in 2017, with my co-founder Sneha, who's behind there, I, I, we, were, we were all talking apps at that point of time. India was talking of digital India. And I looked at Bharat Natyam and I said, hey, I have students coming to my class twice a week and then they go back and I tell them to practice and they don't practice. And I think this is the bane of all performing art teachers. And I said, let's do something. So, and then we created this browser-based application called Natya Ramba, which was my first venture into marrying technology into a very traditional art form. And of course, this is now followed across the world. Slowly and steadily, this continued. And then, of course, the pandemic hit us. So 2020, when the world was real, we were all locked down. And on the first day of the lockdown on March uh, 20th of 2020, I said, let's do something online. Of course, all of us learned how to even, I even downloaded Instagram only then. I didn't even you know, have it then. So slowly and steadily, we started marrying technology to the arts. We created something called Namaskaram, a one minute video. And we asked people from across the globe to say thank you through dance. And that happened. And it became an ode to all the, uh, to all the warriors, the doctors, which, which happened then. Slowly, in, and we continued through the, through the lockdown. I'm giving you this very brief background as to, you know, I, I'm coming into the topic in a bit. So slowly, um, I think we'll fast forward. <laughs> yeah, and then we continued to engage artists online through various, to, through various schemes throughout 20 and 21. One was called With Me, uh, where we looked at artists, mental health, Punarnava, inspiration, inspiration from the likes of Sonal Mansingji and those who have gone through extraordinary travails in life and have bounced back with the power of art. And we, in, uh, we uh, created a, a beautiful rap song called Jile with children. So that this positivity was something that we were pushing through the arts, through the technology, and through inspiration and motivational concepts. And then in September 2020, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about the power of Katha, the power of storytelling in his Man Ki Baat. And that's when Kutti Kahani happened. As a dancer, I'm essentially a storyteller. I'm, I tell narratives, I share narratives. My mother, like, all, all, like for all of us, used to tell us a story every night. And she would animate it with song, music, dance, multi-language, and she would make us write and draw about it later. And that became, I think for all of us, the bedrock of our civilizational learning and of our values and life lessons. In September 2020, while this monkey bath was happening, I was assailed. I was seeing young children locked up in their homes with parents locked up in their bedrooms, not knowing, I mean, busy with their, with their work, children not going out to school. So I asked myself this question, in a globalized world, how can we make our children stay connected to their roots? It often seems that young India is so deracinated and so far completely removed from their roots. Well, punishing schedules of parents, absolutely um, heavy timetables of schools, nuclear families, all these put together have seen us sidestepping of the transmission of civilizational knowledge. And our transmission happened through stories, through learning, through the arts, as Swarupji so beautifully just put it in front of us. While this thought was assailing me, what also came to the fore is small pockets of young children across India and the globe were still staying connected to the arts. Music class, dance class, painting classes, gardening, all these traditional art forms, crafts, where they went and learned. They learned something about their art. For example, I would have young parents come up to me and say, you've taught me a story that I never knew about. I, I, simple, I ask I asked them back a simple question. If I'm teaching my student of seven years or eight years, Krishnani Begane Baru, 
and i don't teach the child four stories on krishna the child can't emote and hence learning the art forms learning any of the arts or crafts becomes the shortest pathway to traditional knowledge because willy nilly you will learn it so i looked at this and i said how can we how can i capture these students who are still staying in those little little uh, classrooms imbibing values and cultural ethos and india's wisdom immersing in our bharatiya legacy and we at natya ramba that is the platform we said let's listen in to what the children already know and thus was born kutti kahani kutti kahani was essentially kutti small kahani stories chote chote kahani wherein i reached out to children in the age group of 6 to 13 across the globe across india it went across the globe later to tell me a story a hindu story that they knew through the prism of their own performative talent and i told the parents please video it on your on your on your phones and send it back to us and it became a new way of sharing knowledge because what we did to these videos is we of course amped it up and you know we had a professional digital designer do the animation and all that so that it became of international standard and it became we called it kutti kahani eternal stories young storytellers so when a, one of their own was telling the stories the children loved it and this was going online every morning 8 am from november 20th to december 31st of 2020 it had music it had it had stories through music dance chanting puppetry poetry acting and of course storytelling so it became a new method of sharing traditional knowledge through and values through the through the prism of arts and of course technology so what it did is this is of course dedicated to every grandparent and teacher and generations of storytellers we all are storytellers which have kept india's cultural civilization alive and because it was a video um Pro, video project we had a little nice jingle that we added to it so we said kutti 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 kahani chote chinna kutti kahani kutti 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 kahani and it went on from dada dadi from tata paati kutti 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 kahani so this is what it was so what it became was it was a multi art it, it was a multi art um, multilingual digital design and animation you can forward it yeah. so multi art of course as i just they had so many art forms multilingual i ended up having 11 languages and wherever i needed i had subtitles and we had uh, st young storytellers from majhuli island to ludhiana to gujarat to ahmedabad to kerala and of course uk usa singapore and malaysia and it brought alive multitude of stories many that even i didn't know so what so this was how there were the many uh, uh, many episodes and i remember sneha and i talking and saying i mean she calls me akka and she said akka you won't get more than 10 episodes and we had 55 episodes <laughs> and and we had to stop it at some point of time so what it uh, what it essentially had was it was a 55 episode um, stories from india storytelling in the age group of 6 to 13 as i said multi art stories from epics puranas folk tales bhakti poets handicrafts and even something on neem tree uh, young stories across india languages english sanskrit hindi tamil telugu marathi kannada malayalam bengali punjabi and assamese and of course a whole bunch of performing arts now i will just i'm just coming into the book i will just share with you some snippets so that you have an idea how the videos uh, look and how how they played out first video is one of our favorites um it's a it's a by a young 7 year old and he spoke on um narasimha uh, uh is that the tethering that a wifi 
<laughs> okay, so uh, what we had is, until that comes up, we had different methodologies to do it. We had instrumentation, like children would send us stories through instrument playing. Once it comes up, you tell me. I'll just stop talking after that. Um, so Namaste. The My name is Vitarag Upadhyay. Today, I'm going to tell you a very beautiful story. But <laughs> Wi-Fi? Which story should I tell you? There are so... Uh, oh, that's sad. <laughs> Technology will kill us, won't it? <laughs> Okay, so we had um, children sending us instruments from Majuli Island. We had, you know, sent people, sent young uh, playing the drums. Ch a chanda player, a five-year-old chanda player said, I want to be, I, I want to grow up and play chanda in the Trishur Puram. That was his aim in life and he played the chanda. So what was happening is seeing this, the urban child was also getting excited. The urban child was saying, hey, I also want to learn this. Then we had stories from the Puranas uh, told uh, by, in, in Tamil, um, a child, you know, there's a young, there's a sequence in which a young sister asks the elder sister, after the Dashavtaram, you know, the, the Golu is happening, Dashara Golu, and she plays, misplaces Swamana before Narasimha. So the elder sister says, this is not the way to do it. And then they place it right, and then she says, the young sister says, Akka, have all the gods come and gone? Will there be no other god coming? <laughs> and the elder sister replies, illa, illa, kalki varu var, varu var. So it became a simple, easy way for children to connect. So parents and teachers were excited to bring these stories alive in the most interesting way possible. We also, because it was the pandemic, we had even chants. Like was a young child who, who um, I wish this was playing. <laughs> I wish we could do that. Yeah? It's done? Okay, we can play that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Namaste. My name is Vitarag Upadhyay. Today, I'm going to tell you a very beautiful story. But which story should I tell you? There are so many pillars here. I will tell you a story where Lord Vishnu came out of a pillar. But before that, let's close our eyes and sing a prayer. One minute. Shruti box. Achutam Keshavam Long, long ago, there was a boy named Pralada. He was a very good boy, just like me. Achutam Keshavam but his father was not like oh, not like his father. <laughs> my father. He was oh, <laughs> we tested it yesterday. <laughs> the Wi-Fi is not good. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I wish we could play this. Yeah, so we had this other uh, story where we had this child uh, talk, uh, re repeat the, uh, you know, Vaidyanath Ashtakam, which was very needed during the pandemic. And we, uh, we, so what was happening here is some of the videos is you, you can see we added animation, we added the scripture, we added the subtitling, we added the meanings. Uh, for example, uh, Nirvana Ashtakam of, of Adi Shankara, all this kept getting added. So the visual became very exciting for the child. Not only is, is the child listening to a story, but the child is also seeing and learning extra things that were being added on to it. Uh, and then what happened in May of 2021, um, Doordarshan reached out to me and said, these are fantastic videos. Would you, would you please share it with us? Of course, free. So, <laughs> so we said, we shared it with them and they telecast it on prime time uh, in DD Bharati at nine in the morning and in the evening. So it became a, another uh, way of connecting. And then a thought assailed me. I said, okay, now that we've done these videos, how do I put this all together and add further information so that it goes out to the young as a, co a cohesive um, book? And that's when we came upon this idea of releasing this as a video embedded ebook. So that's what it is now. Koti Kahani is a video embedded ebook. Technology has been very stressful on the publication front because video embedding is a difficult format. 
Uh, but instead of just videos, we also added, uh, we amped, uh, amped it up a bit, and we added did you know segments for each of the book, for each of the stories. For example, if one child was talking about, um, say this little boy is talking about Narasimha, we added all the Narasimha Kshetras. Where are the Narasimha Kshetras? Or if one child was talking of, say, um, of Annamacharya Sankirtana, we said, what are the seven names of the seven um, hills of um, Tirmala? You know, Veda, uh, Simadri, Vedadri, and all that. So these kind of extra information, which is available in, in, in general space, we picked that up, cleaned it up, and so that the child gets to read, learn, know, listen, see, understand, and own. So this was what we had planned. And then, of course, uh, if we can forward to that slide, Sneha, to the PM slide. So um, on the 18th of June, something exciting happened in our lives. Hali hai mein mujhe desh ki prasit bhartiya sastriya nutyangra Ananda Shankar Jain ka ek patra mela. अपने पत्र में उन्होंने मन की बात के उस एपिसोड के बारे में लिखा है जिसमें हमने स्टोरी टेलिंग के बारे में चर्चा की थी उस कार्यक्रम में हमने इस फील्ड से जुड़े लोगों की प्रतिभा को एक्नॉलेज किया था मन की बात के उस कार्यक्रम से प्रेरित होकर आनंदा शंकर जयंत ने कुट्टी कहानी तैयार की है यह बच्चों के लिए अलग अलग भाषाओं की कहानियों का एक बेहतरीन संग्रह है यह प्रयास इसलिए भी बहुत अच्छा है क्योंकि इससे हमारे बच्चों का अपनी संस्कृति से लगाव और गहरा होता है उन्होंने इन कहानियों के कुछ इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियोस अपने यूट्यूब चैनल पर भी अपलोड किए हैं मैंने आनंदा शंकर जैन के इस प्रयास की विशेष तौर पर इसलिए चर्चा की क्योंकि ये देखकर मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा कि कैसे देशवासियों के अच्छे काम दूसरों को भी प्रेरित कर रहे हैं इससे सीखकर वे भी अपने हुनर से देश और समाज के लिए कुछ बेहतर करने की कोशिश करते हैं यही तो हम भारतवासियों का वो कलेक्टिव पावर है जो देश की प्रगति में नई शक्ति भर रही है यू वॉन्ट टू प्ले एनी Sneha says two minutes she wants to try playing something. Maybe play the smaller ones. A lot of, we worked almost for a week on that, so it's unfair that it doesn't play. <laughs> ah, he's back. Namaste. My name is Vitarag Upadhyay. Today I am going to tell you a very beautiful story. But which story should I tell you? There are so many pillars here. I will tell you a story where Lord Vishnu came out of a pillar. But before that, let's close our eyes and sing a prayer. One minute. Shruti box. Achyutam Keshavam Long, long ago, there was a boy named Pralada. He was a very good boy, just like me. But his father was not like my father. He was a bad person. His name was Hiranya Kashapu. Pralada used to always pray to Lord Vishnu. Hiranya Kashapu did not like it. He thought he was the Lord of the universe. He was very arrogant. So one day, he told Pralada to pray to him. Pralada said, No, my Lord is Vishnu. Hiranya Kashapu got very angry. He asked, Where is your Vishnu? Pralada said, Vishnu is everywhere. Hiranya Kashipu started laughing. <laughs> that is so funny. Is he there in this floor? Pralada said yes. Is he there in the sky? 
Pralada said yes. Is he there in the stone? Um, कौन कहते हैं Is he there in the bird? Is he there in the tree? For everything, Pralada said yes. And he asked, Is he there in the pillar? Pralada said, Of course, yes. Vishnu is everywhere. Hiranya Kashyap got very angry. He took his gada and he went and broke the pillar. And you know what came out of the pillar? Nara Simha. Nara means man. Simha means lion. So half man and half lion. That was Vishnu. He came and killed Hiranya Kashyapu. I'm protected, Pralada. So what is the moral of the story? You should not be arrogant. You should always believe in good. You should be always a good boy. Namaste. Tam Keshavam. See you all in the next episode of Kutti Kahani. So these were the kind of stories, different stories uh, would come. I mean, I'm almost closing in now. So Sneha, can you just forward it to the, um, to the, after the PM's video, the testimonials one, and then we can close it. So now... So of course we had, of course Hanand also has, you know, wrote about it, a lot of um, testimonials. People have given us a good feedback on this uh, Kuti Kahani e-book and this is what it, what it finally, this is a little roundup of it, yeah. That was Kutti Kahani, which is available. Uh, Sneha Magapu uh, from my team and Gunja Nashtaputra, a, a, a visual designer, has done this. So um, you can just forward it to the next one. So that's what it is, uh, an e-book that is available and uh, it's available on Amazon. So this is how we have tried to bring in our arts, like Sama Sarubji beautifully said it, uh, our arts, their knowledge, Indic knowledge, through the prism of arts, using technology, using the platform of technology, animation, design, by children, for children, and also maybe for all of us, because some stories, uh, I had to learn from the children. So a lot of stories like that. So this is what we have done, and that is what I wanted to share here. So I, I wanted to continue the conversation since um, that is the plan. So I, I wanted to... Um, Thank you, Swarupji, for your beautiful um, comment on the aesthetics. And I say this because my guru, Rukmini Devi Arundel, used to always say, art and culture is not entertainment or even a career, but life. And I think you s said that so beautifully. I think we need extra mics on stage. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, there are two points I want to talk about art. One is that nations are made by artists and by poets. And I've cut out one bit which said not politicians. <laughs> Arts contains in itself the deepest principles of life, the trust guide to the greatest area, the art of living. Absolutely. And the way I use art is really something and it's like based on my work and I'd like to share that with you. So art is A-R-T, that's action, reflection and transformation. So art can do that. Art can really do that. So when you take an action in art and you reflect on it, you are a transformed being. And like they say that the arts and drama cannot transform a nation but it can transform the human beings that can transform the nation. I'll add one more word to, to the art. Nedhanuri uh, Krishnamurthy, a very senior, I think we can now ka, ka, pull our chairs a little in front. Nedhanuri Krishnamurthy ji who, uh, paraphrased art as Annamacharya Ramadas and Tyagaraja. <laughs> so three of the doyens of Telugu music. I think uh, we can open up for questions now, if any. Any questions? Yeah, I see one hand going up. I think Bharat's hand is going up. I think I'm going to pull it up a bit. I have a very simple question. Uh, you know, I grew up in Mumbai, 70s, 80s. Uh, we had a topic called uh, civics. History was separate. Civics was separate. Uh, at 50, I think we overemphasize on rights. Are our teachers today teaching our children their duties towards the nation? I'm talking purely duties, civics. Are the teachers actually teaching? I am sorry, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. No offense meant, please. Yes, it is a part of the national curriculum. And what you probably learned and I, uh, we did is just been changed and now it's become more robust. And uh, you know, we're talking about seva for the nation, which is there in the new uh, national curriculum framework of school education. So it's talking of not only, uh, you know, empowerment, but your seva to the nation and it is. I request Srimati Priya Sam and Mr. Siddharth Ji from Perks to come up to the stage to present the memento. Thank you very much, Swarup Ji. Thank you, Shefali, and thank you, um, uh, the Veranda Club and Bharat Fast Forward for having us here to share our stories.